there's no denying the incredible impact that Laura Mulvey's visual pleasure and narrative cinema has had on the world of feminist film theory. Today, I will be exploring how the concept of the male gaze and how thinking on female spectatorship has evolved since the publishing of Mulvey's essay in 1973. In visual pleasure, Mulvey utilizes psychoanalytic concepts from Freud and Lacan to assert that pleasure derived from cinema is scopophilic in nature. That is, the pleasure produced from viewing a film comes from subjecting others to what Mulvey calls a controlling and curious gaze that fetishizes them as an object. This desire to objectify others with their gaze is erotic in nature, while there is a secondary pleasure from a narcissistic identification with the human forms on screen. Mulvey argues that due to our world being ordered by sexual imbalance, pleasure and looking has been split between active male and passive female. Women are displayed as sexual objects that possess a to-be-looked-at-ness that lends itself to male pleasure. Men on screen, however, act as bearer of the look of the spectator, someone for the viewer to project themselves onto in order to feel as if they are in control of the events on screen, and most importantly, the male gaze. Viewing the 1953 classic Gentlemen Prefer Blondes by Howard Hanks through the lens of Mulvey, one sees that Marilyn Monroe is a diamond herself, a sparkling object meant to be ogled by men in tuxedos and the spectator alike. In her essay, Feminist Film Theory and Women at the Movies, Judith Maine discusses how in light of Gloria Steinem's book, Marilyn, one sees the excessive identification of women with the screen image as Monroe, a lover of film, went on to become the idealized to be looked at woman she saw on screen in her younger years. Another take on Mulvey comes from Claire Pajakowska in her essay, Psychoanalysis Beyond the Gaze, From Celluloid to New Media. The modern author explains how Mulvey suggests that the seductive images of women are especially desirable and frustrating, and that these are therefore objects of ritual and symbolic humiliation and punishment, gratifying the sadistic element of unconscious instincts. The gratification stemming from the sexual frustration that comes with being able to view the woman as object but being unable to possess her can be seen in the 2007 films Transformers by Michael Bay and Disturbia by DJ Caruso. Both starring Shia LaBeouf, across from the sex symbols Megan Fox and Sarah Romer, you see the male character gazing at something he cannot possess and becoming visibly flustered as a result, mirroring the supposed feelings of the spectator. Both Fox and Romer are used as objects and eye candy for the male gaze throughout both films, serving as modern representations of Mulvey's to be looked atness. Another scholar, commenting on visual pleasure, challenges this application in contemporary film criticism. Frances Fuzzick Kelly argues in her essay, Reframing Gender and Visual Pleasure New Signifying Practices in Contemporary Cinema that Mulvey's assessment in visual pleasure is outdated and that modern film has evolved due to the development of feminism since the 1970s. She states that even where a female remains the object of the desiring gaze, she may be the recipient of admiring looks from both female characters and spectators. This is seen in the 1996 film From Dust Till Dawn by Robert Rodriguez, where Salma Hayek's character captivates the entire audience of the diegetic world both men and women alike, and supposedly men and women in the audience as well. Another example of Pheasant Kelly's argument is Will Gluck's film, Easy A from 2010, in which a scandalously clad Emma Stone is gawked at by both boys and girls as she struts through the hallway of her high school. However, Emma's character in the diegetic world is more complex than the female characters in the previous clips. She purposefully embodies to be looked atness, unprompted by anyone else, in order to shock those that have previously slut chained her. Even her choice of clothing is poignant fancy lingerie that conjures images of pinups from the age of old Hollywood, and classic Ray Ban Wayfair sunglasses that gained popularity during the same time period. 
Gluck's film is therefore standing to comment on how and if Mulvey's to be looked at this can be reclaimed, not to serve as eye candy for the male gaze, but instead to challenge it. Overall, whether or not you agree that Mulvey's thoughts and visual pleasure still ring true when applied to today's cinema, one has to acknowledge how massively influential her work has been across multiple disciplines. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.